All right, welcome everyone. My name is Ryan Smith. This is ModX Network Voices. I'm joined today by my partner, Ivan Rutnik. Ivan, I'd like to say hello. Hi, Ryan. Hi, everybody. Nice to be back to this uh, feature. Yeah, well, it's been a while, and we're excited to have some guests with us from Stora Enso. Uh, today, we have Mila Dunsheve and Steve Lieberman. Uh, Mila is Business Development Manager for UK and Ireland, and Steve is Business Development Manager for North and South America. Uh, we've invited them to come and talk a little bit about what Stora Enso is working on with regards to mass timber and volumetric modular. And what is the intersection of the two? So, Mila, Steve, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. I think they're going to present a little bit and then we'll have a conversation after. So, with that, uh, Stora Enso, yeah, please take over. So, let me share my screen if I can. You can see that? Yes? Perfect. Yes. Okay. So my name is Steve Lieberman. Thanks, Ryan, Ivan, uh, ModX for inviting us. Uh, kind of wanted to just give a quick intro to Stora Enso and you know our company and what we do. Um, so, and if there's any questions, uh, particularly in North America, uh, my contact information is uh, listed right there on the screen. And let's see if we can't do this. There we go. So Stora Enso is probably one of the largest CLT companies that you've never heard of. Uh, you know, we're relatively new in North America, but uh, we've been around for quite some time. We're actually the oldest LLC corporation in the world. Our first stock certificate was issued in 1288. So we're, we've been around for about 700 years plus. And that's actually a picture of our our actual stock certificate. We are a global company and we have divisions in packaging materials, packaging and solutions, biomaterials, wood products, forest and paper. So uh, although mass timber is a growing uh, sector of our business, uh, it is uh, just a portion of what we do. As far as mass timber production, and you'll excuse me if I say CLT when I mean mass timber, uh, but we produce other products as far as mass timber to be used in all sorts of projects, including modular. Uh, our first is Bad St. Uh, Leonard BSL in Austria, IBS also in Austria, and then Gruvon in Sweden. And we have a fourth one coming up in the Czech Republic. We also do mass LVL, which is just like your typical laminated veneer lumber, but in large panels. And we're one of the world's largest tim mass timber manufacturers. Uh, and of course, we use the latest technology. Uh, Store Enzo is one of the leaders in technology. As far as mass timber, whether it's modular or other products, uh, we've produced over 2,000 mass timber projects in the past year. So we, we have the resources to produce these projects. And, uh, you know, we'd like to go further with that. We also are one of the world's largest forest owners. So we take the wood, both, you know, right from the forest to the sawmills. We mill uh, all of our own lumber. We were a big proponent of sustainable uh, resources. So 100% of our wood comes from sustainable resources. We track where the wood comes from. Uh, and we're uh, we make sure that the the trees that are harvested are replaced uh, in in addition. So it, more trees are grown than are harvested. Again, back to mass timber. There's CLT, which is cross laminated timber. There's CLT rib panels, which are a combination of CLT and LVL or glue lamb. LVL panels, uh, rib panels cassettes and stairs. So there's a, a wide variety of what you can do with these mass timber components. Uh, and because we mill our own lumber, we have control over the layups, the thicknesses of the what we call the lamellas. And those panels are what's called edge glued. So the, the lamellas are glued together uh, sideways. And that gives you 
better quality and less permeability for in the event of a fire or air permutation. As far as where you can use mass timber, both with modular, there's also single family homes, extensions, which is a, a use that's being used now because of the lightweight of wood, adding on to the top of buildings, schools, offices, which I think are getting most of the media attention, public buildings, uh, and residential, what the Europeans call flats, we call homes, you know, residential houses. Uh, and all of those are uh, applications where mass timber fits very well. As far as digital uh, digitalization, the, we use digitalization in every stage of production, wood harvesting, but also with our clients and customers. So uh, modular construction, I believe, is very highly digitized which fits well with a bespoke or custom product that's cut within a couple of millimeters. So that way, when we, when you, when the product arrives, it's cut already to size, it's already got the openings ready to go uh, and works with, you know, prefabrication or uh, fabrication prior to installation. And as far as digital, digital tools, you know, most manufacturers offer some of these. I think we're one of the world's leaders as far as websites, handbooks, structural uh, tools like Calculatus, product libraries, as far as BIM libraries to, to plug into your BIM modeling system, CLT360+, Plus, which is a mobile app to track those products. And also we're working on moisture sensors. So these are pilots, but WIST, and so we have passive and active moisture sensors that are in the pilot program right now. But BIM modeling is one of the key features as far as CLT, uh, unlike stick framing and some other things where you have pieces and parts that are cut on site. These, these components are cut again, very accurately with all the openings we work, uh, so there's a lot of pre-con that goes on with this pre-construction uh, to make sure that those pieces are cut properly. And if they are designed properly, then they're cut properly. So we take those models, we put them into our CNC files. Uh, those are two of our CNC machines right there, the, the, uh, the master panels. So we produce master panels and then they're cut into the individual components. And then you can see, what some of that CL, uh, CNC can do. Uh, so, you know, that's kind of a general overview of the manufacturing process of CLT, what we do and how we coordinate with our customers or clients. That's great. Yeah. Thanks so much, Steve. Um, and I'll continue with sharing the screen uh, to play a video So thanks so much, Steve, for that overview. Now we're about to see just how we manufacture cross laminated timber at Stora Enzo. So a lot of what we do is all based on removing fossil based materials with ones based on trees. Um, and this is how we apply this in the construction industry. So here we see the, the planks being selected. Um, with strict quality control, that one was rejected, for example. Then we see the finger jointing, which is the next step of the process. And then we, we make a panel, so we edge glue, so we glue both vertically and horizontally, which is a quite a unique feature of storing across laminated timber. You can see the one of those uh, panels, which are glued vertically, then gets dropped down for the horizontal gluing as well. And very importantly, our glue, the adhesives we use are environmentally friendly and they make up uh, up to 1% of the total mass of the product, which makes it uh, reusable for bioenergy or other purposes. And here you can see just some, some of the beautiful CNC finishes that uh, Steve showed us in the photos as well. 
lots of uh, automation is being used also just to reduce the strain on people. So we're very focused on uh, people's well-being. And this is a summary of the manufacturing process. And finally, the panels are ready to be delivered directly to, uh, in the case of modular construction, to your factory door, which would be different to panelized construction when they would arrive to the when they would arrive to the building site. Um, and it's quite interesting is that you'd also know the exact order uh, and the exact sequencing in which they will arrive uh, to your factory and of course or of course to to your building site. Um, so I'm just going to talk. Um, more about what happens now after the after the COT panels are manufactured. What happens um, to create modules and and modular projects using Storenzo's mass timber? Uh, first, a little bit of an explanation about the difference between panelized manufacturing, um, typical modular manufacturing, and the modular manufacturing process if you use um, Storenzo mass timber. So. Um, in panelized manufacturing, typically what you do is you'd have uh, a cutting line where all the materials are cut to size using either manual or uh, automated source. Then you'd assemble your panels, uh, which can vary um, in degrees of prefabrication. Um, if they're mass timber panels, they'll typically have CNC openings and they'll form the solid wall of the superstructure. Um, if you're making closed timber panels, uh, which are similar more to stick building, but, but in panelized form, then it's very common that insulation can get added, um, etc. as well as windows. So in that case, um, pre-manufactured value, which is a key characteristic in the UK market at the moment. People want to pre-manufacture really as much as possible in the factory for the added benefits that it brings on site, uh, such as reducing waste materials, simplifying logistics, reducing labor demand, um, improving energy efficiency, um, uh, and many others. So, they, they can, so panelized systems according to research can have around 20 to 40 percent pre-manufactured value whereas it's when you get to the modular systems that you can really make as much uh, as possible in the factory so different people will tell you um, other other variations typically research suggests that up to 80 percent of the value of the building can be pre-manufactured in a factory. Now, however, achieving that can be quite complicated if you're doing the whole process. So if you want to cut your materials, then make the panels, then assemble modules, uh, and finally have those products ready for this for, for dispatch. Um, so this, this would be the typical modular manufacturing process which again comes with um, a lot of a lot of labor that needs to be sequenced, a lot of space required to make the panels, then assemble them, etc. Um, whereas modular manufacturing with Storenzo mass timber is a relatively simplified process compared to what we see above, because you get the what you do is you get the panels um, pre-manufactured. So the solid timber panels come to your factory. Um, as we saw, they can come with the CNC. Uh, openings pre-cut to really simplify what you need to do in your own um, modular manufacturing facilities. So that all that you need to do is assemble your modules and then have them ready to, for dispatch to the building site. And what happens in that assembly process, uh, here is the diagram, um, which, which shows where um, mechanization can be used, let's say in the assembly of modules using the wall elements and floor elements. You usually use cranes, of course, so that's mechanization. Whereas in the rest, you do see a lot of more manual tasks, let's say when you add your energy and water, so when you do your plumbing, then when you do your decoration, and then finally when you prepare um, the modules ready to be transported to site. So what we see here is a really optimized balance between how much you can get in terms of pre-manufactured value so that the modules 
arrive to the site as complete as possible for this, you know, how much work you have to do uh, in your modular assembly facility. And this is what uh, this is what the modular process looks like. These are images from our previous factory in Hertola in Finland. Um, so modular manufacturing is similar to um, other, other manufacturing systems you would have seen where a module typically moves from one location to the next in a certain tack time, which can be, uh, which is usually a few minutes. So every few minutes, a module moves from one station to the next, and there's a specific task that, that's, that gets done at each station. Um, so at the last uh, slide, we saw, let's say, mechanical electrical plumbing gets added on, on a certain number of stations one by one, after which you can install the cleaning that that gets done on the next set of stations, et cetera, et cetera. So the modules move smoothly from station to station and a very specific task gets completed at each station. Um, and importantly, with a specific advantage of modular construction is that you can do really, really a lot um, in the factory. So everything from your light bulbs to the kitchen cabinets, to the paint, um, to the flooring finishes, to the doors, you know, all of that can be pre can be pre-installed in, um, in the factory environment. And so overall, using cross-laminated timber um, manufactured by Stora and so saves time as well as work hours, production equipment and production space uh, in the modular manufacturing facilities. And ultimately, this leads to boosting uh, productivity in those modular manufacturing facilities, which is then also transposed to the building sites where the modules can be installed, you know, typically at the rate of about one module per hour, um, depending, of course, on the crane on the crane lifting plan. Uh, but at least the ones I've seen, one module get lift, gets lifted in an hour. Um, so if you're doing low rise, for example, and you have uh, two semi detached houses, each house with two modules, that means you can install one of your one of your one of your units, which is two houses. You can install that in about four hours or, you know, half a working day. So half a working day, you've got two houses installed, uh, you plug and play, etc. do some quality checks and then you're ready to um, pretty much sell those on the market. So that's an overview of the modular manufacturing process. Now we're going to have a look at how it's actually done with some international case studies by Stora Enzo. Um, so the first one here that I've got um, is by New Living and, and Swan and Pollard Thomas Edwards Architects. Um, so Swan housing our uh, Essex largest house builder. Um, if you're not too familiar, of course, with the UK geography, Essex is just outside, it's just outside of London. So it's a, this beautiful leafy uh, London, London suburb almost. And they manufacture all of their all of the houses using cross laminated timber modular processes. Um, and they have a online configurator where a person who is interested in living a swan house in a swan or new living house can go online, can choose whether they want their um, their living room to be upstairs or downstairs, whether they want two or three bedrooms, what time of what type of finish they want, etc., etc. Et, et so it's there are a lot of variations possible, which are all based on the standardized uh, on the standardized design, or um, sometimes referred to as a standardized sachet sach sachets you would, would use um, in the transportation industry. But on that one single standardized element, you can create so many variations uh, to suit many different customers needs with needs with many different profiles and housing sizes. So here's a short video of what happens uh, in the new living factory. Um, so these the, are the modules assembled using cross laminated timber and then uh, being transported uh, to the building site in some protective uh, wrapping. And some of the time saving measures, of course, of using modular construction are highlighted there. I 
in considering the increasing uh, housing shortage in the UK, that ability to produce 300 to 400 homes is, is really important uh, to increasing you know, the, the whole nation's quality of life. Okay, so that, that's what happens on the factory when up to the building side gate. And then we've also got a continuation of that process. So when the modules are delivered, um, these are the lifting operations. Uh, a few things to point out there typically are the low number of people, so very few workers, as well as just the rapid installation sequence. There we go, and you've got and you've got a, a lovely townhouse ready and constructed. So that was quite a detailed case study from the UK, but of course, modular manufacturing is using CRT as applicable across the globe. Um, so these are images from Pukuoka, uh, which was a finalist in the in the Miss Van der Rohe uh, Awards. So Pukuoka one uh, was the first eight story high wooden apartment building in Finland, in Finland. So it did break some records in terms of heights. Um, and yet it has won several prize, prizes because of its placemaking as well as the architectural visions that it displays, um, which again is a quite common stigma we see with modular manufacturing, you know, the look and feel, uh, perhaps more from an aesthetic architectural point of view. And the fact that this project won this award um, really goes to show just how uh, the varying aesthetics can be achieved with modular mass timber construction. And overall, uh, the project explores the potential of modular pre prefabricated cross laminated timber to meet to meet the goal of providing both high quality but also environmentally friendly uh, housing for um, for people in Finland. And here we've got um, another case study, which is again from Finland. Um, so these are affordable rental uh, modular ho housing this time. So this is more for the affordable market. And critically, they used the project used quite a creative way to create the apartment. So the modules are the are um, directed at 90 degrees to each other at parts. Um, and as well as they have many different protruding balconies. Um, the balconies in this case, some of them um, serve as a protection against or to maximize or to maximize solar gains um, as you get quite a lot of passive energy by uh, passive solar energy from uh, from uh, in these areas here. And overall, they achieve you know, quite an interesting push pull effect um, in 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 Helsinki. Um, there was something here that I wanted to mention, uh, which which I think is um, oh yes, so yes, it was about the ground floor. So the ground floor of each house is concrete, but then the rest of the floors are made are all made out of timber construction. And uh, so, and quite importantly, the, the facade of these buildings is made out of timber as well. So they really showcase how we can use cross laminated timber for the load bearing elements, um, as well as combined with modular construction, how we can have different protruding and extruding elements to create a dynamic facade, but then also maximizing the use of timber in, that, uh, in the materials of that facade as well. So those have been some um, international case studies in, in modular construction. And thank you very much for the opportunity to present today. Well, thank you very much, uh, both. Mila and Steve for coming and presenting this. Uh, to couch our conversation here, we'll have a, a question answer period. And I'll, uh, I wanted to just mention that uh, in connection to uh, the Mass Timber Conference, uh, ModEx was retained to put together a track that focused on offsite and housing. And this particular topic came up, Mila and Steve, and uh, a number of our sessions focused on it. Ivan and I, with Tyler Schmetter, our partner, wrote uh, a front article called Mass Timber Products to Mass Timber Systems, which probes the fundamental question that you're presenting here, which is how do we take mass timber products that might be bespokely cut as a commodity product and sold to a job site, to a general contractor on the job site? And how do you take that into level two? And, maybe, and, and as you're suggesting, level three manufacturing, which is add value in a factory setting. So my first question would be, and it's fantastic you're working on this because I think it's really relevant to today. My first question for, for both of you is in looking at these examples, 
Um, let's go specifics. Uh, new living. Uh, who is doing the level three value add? Is that Store Enso? Is that New Living? Is that a pop up factory? You know, what, who is the entity doing that work? Because ultimately, those logistics are quite important, right? Yeah, yeah, no, that's a really good point, Ryan, and it's quite fascinating because it all links to the business models topics, uh, topic which 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 is uh, yeah really important in mass timber construction. Um, so in the case of Swan and New Living, so Swan are a housing association, and New Living, I believe, are the manu are the manufacturing um, as well as the perhaps the private homes um, entity. Anyway, so Swan are a housing association. New Living is a separate company, and they both work together. So both of those are a um, a partner of Storenzo, a trusted partner in the UK, um, and that's that's leads to the way that we at Storenzo operate. So we are a mass timber manufacturer, we're especially good at that, and we focus on delivering the best mass timber products we can. So we make the mass timber panels, and then it's up to our partners who we work with um, to to decide how they want to use them. Do they want to use them on a building site? Or is in the case of Swan Housing and New Living, do they want to set up their own permanent factory? So they do have a big permanent factory um, just outside of London in Essex. So they get the COT from us um, and then they do all the rest of the finishing in the factory. Then you, you could see the number of houses they can produce, etc. So yeah, that, that's the way it works. They basically buy, buy the material from us um, and then it, it's up to them how they want to do the manufacturing in their own facility afterwards. That's great. So you are supplying to New Living as a, as a value add manufacturer who is then delivering and probably doing a lot of self-performing or subcontracting to a general contractor who sets who sets all those boxes on the on the job site, right? Um, it's an interesting model. Uh, it's one that we're trying to deal with here in the United States in North America. Um, during the Mass Timber Conference, we saw a Timber Labs. So we'll tie this to Timber Labs, who is an outgrowth, or a, I should say, a child company or a sister company to uh, to Swinerton Builders, big general contractor. Uh, who's doing a lot of that kind of uh, work of formatting, you know, level two uh, manufacturing. So they're procuring flat panels from like DR Johnson or Vaughan Timbers, or now, um, uh, you know, some of the mass timber manufacturers in the Pacific Northwest, and then adding value by formatting them. So that last step, you know, the level three is a question who's going to emerge uh, in the United States to do that. And there's a few experiments going on in prototypes, but but that is a big question. So it's great to see that, you know, it's happening in the UK with Swan and New Living and uh, and also in Finland. And we'd like to see uh, that continue. Uh, Ivan, I want to make sure you get your questions in here. So I don't know if, if you have a question you want to ask Ivan here. I, I have another one as well, if not. Well, uh, yeah, just also just to clarify, even the first video before I asked my question, the first video you showed, you mentioned that was a Stora Enso facility, but that was a volumetric modular facility. Was that a partner facility or is Stora Enso also own? Um, just to clarify, and then I also have a, a more, more deep question, but just to clarify that. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so we do have our manufacturing facility for cross laminate timber. And we used to have a modular assembly facility in Hartula in Finland, which we no longer operate. So the right. first video I showed, which was the COT manufacturing, um, that is from one of our COT manufacturing mills. Um, I think it's the one in Ibs. Uh, Steve, right. you showed quite a few on the, on the map, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I, th I believe that was from Ibs. So yeah, we <laughs> operate COT manufacturing and yeah, and that cl Locked. clarifies it. I think we can maybe we could ask. Um, we might, as part of this video, ask for a little more of a timeline. I think something that's very interesting for us in our studies of different companies is the long the long game of business models and and and, and strategies. Because what it's, it sounds like, so you had a volumetric facility in house, and I wouldn't be surprised if that's why you're now able to not have a volumetric in facility in house but to have partners that you can actually communicate with. So you understand their pain points. You understand that this is a, this is a different CLT product, even though it's CLT, uh, it's one that requires probably a higher degree or a different degree of structural finishing. 
than if you're, you're delivering a kit of panels or components to to a site. Um, so maybe it, actually, can you talk? Do you do you know? Um, I, I have two questions, related questions. One is roughly what's the percentage of work that you're doing for this kind of volumetric modular level three versus structural components that are maybe more familiar in the states right now where we're doing you know structural components but not value add and do you have a sense of how, uh, how long have you been doing this kind of level three work since that facility was set up and since you don't have that facility anymore now that you work with these partners well Mia, if you can chime in on the, the history of what we've been doing and i can kind of uh chime in on what we're trying to develop here in North America. Yeah, of course, uh, I would need to check the timelines. Thanks, Steve. I would need to check the timelines on when we did have the facility in Hartula, uh, but I know that Swan House Housing have been a long-standing partner. I'm not too sure on dates in years, um, but I'll maybe be able to check that and get back to you afterwards, Ivan. I do think there was sequential uh, from what I understand, so we had the facility, as you're suggesting, so we had the facility in Hartler in Finland. Um, the residential modular market there was quite oversaturated, as you would know. You know that's quite a that's quite a competitive market market for modular manufacturing. Um, and then what I would assume, but I'm not 100% certain happened, is you know somebody had the smart idea of, hey, why don't we work with other people who want to make their own modules in lots of different countries, and that way we're not limited to one geographic region, but we can actually provide two modular manufacturing facilities in any country and work with them um, to, to make sure that manufacturing process is efficient. Yeah, because Steve, before you jump in, just I think it's interesting in the steel space, we have seen similar models. Um, actually, it's quite similar, whether it's Japan and even some of the in Poland and even some manufacturers we've seen in the US where the structural chassis, um, the steel chassis is is procured um, and to, to different degrees of finish. And then a secondary manufacturing facility essentially works in a more efficient way um, and a more economical way to do what they do best, which is higher end finishes, near site, client relationships. Um, and again, it's, it, so it's interesting to see this model, which, you know, it's a sound model. It's a model we know in automotive, uh, in a way, um, make its way um, make its way into the space and in a way that often happens, which is happenstance and then becomes more strategic. Uh, so good to see those models play out. Uh, but sorry, Steve, I'd love to hear what's, what the plan is for North America. <laughs> Well, I, I think Ryan touched on it. Well, companies like Timberlab, uh, unfortunately, you know, there's very few companies here in North America. We're we're kind of lagging behind Europe on the mass timber side of things. Uh, but I see the enthusiasm with the mass timber conference, folks like yourself that are interested in mass timber. So there, you know, one of my focuses, one of my goals is to develop an ecosystem of companies that can do post manufacturing and kind of fill in the parts. You know, we manufacture the CLT. There, there's, you know, in North America, there's a shortage of installers and engineers that are familiar with mass timber. So, you know, it's a work in progress. I think, uh, you know, it, it's it's progressing well. Uh, but you know, that's where we're going. You know, where you, you've got companies again like Timber Lab. There's a few others that are interested in that space. And I think there's great opportunities for those companies that are interested in, in doing that. And just to follow up to all of this too, is that we've not only, and again, uh, IMTC was a great experience for us because it, it should, we learned some new things about mass timber and also reaffirmed some of our working hypotheses in the offsite space. Um, and one of the things we've also seen across the offsite space in the US is a reluctance of integration. Um, and so, um, so we've seen complaints downstream from architects and builders that they can't procure even, you know, level two CLT uh, for manufacturers. And the argument that we've often heard is because it essentially the print time, <laughs> the routing time is prohibitive. Um, and does, does Toro Enzo have a kind of, uh, you know, established, it sounds like it does, but is there a, is there a kind of finer grain system of obviously the, how does Toro Enzo manage that? How does the Toro Enzo manage kind of client desire for degrees of value add, even within just the structural panels themselves? Um, and does it see it as an obstacle to growth? Uh, Mia, I don't know if you want to chime in uh, because we're relatively new here in North America, but with experience, uh, I think we, we're looking at additional value added uh, 
you know, production in our facilities. I mean, whether it's moisture control, that type of thing. Uh, but I think there's, again, great opportunity with, with those, the, with value added after the CLT manufacturing here in North America. Yeah, definitely, Steve. Um, and something you touched upon that Ivan was procurement, that procurement piece and procurement model, and uh, in general, um, not specifically in Storizo, but in general in the UK, there has been, you know, a big barrier for the use of offsite construction in general. You know, not in, not only just timber, but basically traditional procurement offsite construction do not align. Um, and that's partly because, you know, the traditional procurement model was developed for when you build traditionally on site and people try to, you know, uh, put put uh, put this put the square into a circle almost um, and make offsite construction using that same model. So what what's happened quite a lot is um, a lot of government work has happened here in the UK on alternative procurement models which integra integrate a lot more of that design for manufacture and assembly thinking, right, TFMA. Um, and we're all familiar with that. I know you, you, you both were up for that. Um, but with design for manufacture and assembly, um, what you do is you um, optimize costs uh, as well as time. So you do, sp you do spend more time upfront in design. But what that does is that then saves you time in manufacturing and construction and ultimately also cost because you can have your buildings which you are ready to get revenue from them ultimately sooner. Um, so that, that thinking which Steve also emphasized in the slides, that almost BIM approach, design for manufacturing, assembly BIM approach, when you think about everything up front and then you um, and then you construct it. That does require a different procurement model because you need to know exactly who is manufacturing the COT panels, exactly who is installing everything on site, and then you need to have that input into the upfront design um, design piece. Um, so yeah, that, that's where we've developed a few different procurement models. Um, I think one of them is very creatively called collaborative procurement. Um, and there's a few different versions, uh, but all of them are based on early contractor involvement. So get all the people who are going to be involved in manufacturing and construction, just get them involved much earlier in the design process rather than having those separate. Well, thank you very much, Steve. Thank you very much, Mila. This has been quite informative and reinforces a lot of what we're seeing. Uh, across the globe with regards to offsite construction generally, but in specific, how do we take mass timber as a commodity product and really create value out of it? And as Ivan has said, this is a long game. This is a long process to try and figure this out. And uh, we see that Europe is ahead of North America and we're looking forward to learning the lessons and applying the lessons there. So with that, I want to thank uh, Mila and Steve for joining ModX Voices and um, and we will see you next time. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys.